The rise of the no-code movement in the last decade is reshaping how software is developed and ultimately how it's deployed. No-code is a development approach that allows users to create software applications without writing code. And it enables users to do this through the use of visual interfaces and drag and drop tools, making it completely accessible to non-technical users. In fact, the overall low-code, no-code market is projected to reach 36.4 billion by 2027. So in this video, I'm gonna cover what the benefits of no-code are, how it compares to traditional development, and make sure you stick around until the end of the video if you want to avoid the most common pitfalls when it comes to no-code. Without further ado, Let's jump right in. No-code platforms empower non-technical users to bring their ideas to life with flexibility, meaning you can fail and fix quickly, cost efficiency so you won't break the bank hiring traditional developers, and speed. You'll be able to get your product to market quickly since no code on average typically beats traditional development time by 70 to 90 percent. Some popular platforms if you're interested are Bubble.io, Adalo, Webflow, and Glide. And you can really build a wide variety of things with no code from internal business tools, mobile apps, e-commerce websites, community platforms. The list really does go on. This has really changed the game in the tech world because gone are the days where you need a technical founder or or co-founder for a successful tech startup. Take Jason Shotsky, co-founder of TicketRev. He was able to raise $1.1 million in pre-seed funding by developing his startup TicketRev on Bubble.io. He's not technical, and he says, because we stayed as lean as possible to see if what we were even doing worked and provided value to people, we were able to get TicketRev into the market fast and actually start testing it with real customers. Oftentimes, startups are strapped for money and they wanna get a market fast, which makes no code the perfect solution. Even if you don't wanna go through the learning curve of building the software yourself on a no-code platform, because sometimes no-code platforms can have a learning curve, you can still reap the benefits by hiring a no-code agency. Check mine out if you're interested. And like I said, one of the other benefits for hiring a no-code agency besides time is that you will save a vast amount of money on the development as well. Quick interruption, my name is Sophie and I go by Code by Sophie on all social platforms. Platforms. I create tech content with the aim of lowering the barrier of entry into tech and democratizing the developer economy. So if you support this mission and you found this video helpful so far, make sure you like and subscribe. Now let's get back into the video. Now we get into the moment of truth. Is no code app development actually a trap? It sounds too good to be true. And here's the honest, brutal answer. It can be, if you allow it to be. No-code development, like most things, has its pros and it has its cons. It can be a really great option for a lot of different use cases, but there are also certain instances where it may not be the best option. Here are some things that you should ask yourself before committing to no code. One of the main benefits of no code is that you don't have to traditionally code. You don't have to write a single line of code if you're not interested. And this is largely made possible by the drag and drop UI builders and pre-built components that no code platforms offer. However, the downside to this is that you are locked into whatever the given platform has. And while I will say that no code platform offerings have come quite a long way, and you can build pretty much anything with integration tools like make.com and Zapier, it's important to come to terms with the fact that you might just come across that one thing that isn't convenient or easy to build or even possible to build on the no-code platform that you have currently selected. And yes, you could create a custom widget or a custom component, but the likeliness that you have the technical background to do so or the willingness to do so and learn how to do so are probably slim considering that you are on a no-code, low-code platform to begin with. Another potential pitfall could be vendor lock-in. Unlike traditional development where you can take your code to a different framework, change the architecture, or change the deployment strategy kind of on a whim. With no code, once you choose a platform, you are reliant on that platform. And if you ever decide to change platforms, you'll have to start from scratch. Because no code platforms abstract away so much to make the user experience intuitive and easier, sometimes accomplishing something that would be incredibly simple in traditional development takes a large 
amount of complexity or effort or work around or both to accomplish it in a no code platform, which can result in confusing and hard to maintain software. For example, when using Glide, most logic is contained in the database itself in what they call computed columns. So sometimes trying to get something simple done, like creating a graph or even an if else statement can become a bit more complicated than necessary. Another important pitfall is scalability. It's important to research and recognize the scalability of the software you will be building. Are you planning for this software to be used by millions of users? Will they be accessing it at the same time? Will they need their data to be updated in real time? Let's say you were building Instagram, for example it would be important to understand the limitations of the no code platform that you are on and the support they provide for your given load. And additionally, what the pricing structure is because it could become costly very quickly. Adalo, for example, has limitations on data storage, app actions, and integrations, just to name a few. So for an instance like Instagram, traditional development would be perfect because of its vast customization and scalability options. However, you would have to keep in mind the cost of a traditional developer, the time it would take to complete, the maintenance of the software and the deep technical expertise and project management required to ensure a quality product. Now, I would not let those pitfalls deter you. I just think it's important to have a unbiased and full perspective before choosing something like no code. With that being said, many have seen huge success with no code platforms, and it's estimated that 70% of new business applications will use low code, no code technologies by 2025. Make sure you check out this video I did on five no code startups that make six to seven figures with the software that they built on no code. Now, no code offers speed, cost efficiency, and flexibility, which can be vital for businesses looking to quickly validate their ideas, launch minimal viable products, and create custom internal tools without significant investment in time or money. By leveraging no-code platforms, companies can rapidly prototype, gather user feedback, and iterate, enabling them to adapt swiftly to market demands and optimize their operations effectively. This approach allows businesses to focus resources on refining and scaling successful products, ensuring they can meet evolving customer needs and stay competitive but in dynamic industries. So no code is not a trap. It's just important that you do your research on what your software will need prior to committing to a certain no-code platform and understanding the limitations of that platform. This is no different than traditional development in the sense that different languages and frameworks also come with their own set of pros and cons. And that also requires research before committing to a certain tech stack. I hope this video was helpful and I will catch you guys in the next video.